Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Jamie, Crafty DIY Guy, and I'm back. We have got some fall DIY projects for you from my favorite store, of course, Dollar Tree. I know it's August. I know you guys are probably like, what in the heck? Believe it or not, I'm actually late in getting my fall DIYs out, so I have been cranking out some fall projects for you guys. And uh, I hope to bring you a lot more a lot more, more videos uh, with great fall DIYs because fall is actually my favorite holiday. And I don't know about you guys, but, uh, or I guess fall is my favorite season. Um, and what I was going to say is, I don't know about you guys, but I am ready for this year to be over with. So let's focus on some very cool fall DIYs for you. But before we do that, I do want to say thank you to all of my subscribers, especially my OGs. I really appreciate you guys being here with me since day one. Yesterday on August 14th was actually my one year anniversary on YouTube. So I'm super stoked and very excited about that. And uh, of course, if you are a new subscriber to the channel or you're fairly recent within, let's say the last six, Six months, then uh, I'm just gonna call you an OG for now because now we're in the new year as far as my YouTube channel goes. And if you've been with me the first year, you're an OG. Now, if you are a newbie, thank you so much for checking out the channel and hopefully you'll enjoy this DIY project. So I'm gonna stop rambling and we're just gonna get to the project. All right, bye. All right, everyone. And for our first project, we are going to need some Dollar Tree florals. We're going to need a lot of Dollar Tree florals. We're also going to need one of these grapevine wreaths. You can add some ribbon if you want. I actually did not end up using it. One of these adorable scarecrow door hangers. And again, like I mentioned, lots of Dollar Tree florals. I used every bit that I could possibly find and, uh, and then some. I found these pumpkin sprays. I loved it all. So first I took some of my suede paint and I just literally just kind of used it like antiquing wax and just started to cover my grapevine wreath just to kind of age it a little bit. Once it was completely dry, I did go ahead and uh, chop up my scarecrow there uh, just so I could kind of make sure that everything would lay out properly and uh, kind of get a visual, if you will, of what I wanted to kind of create here. Then I put those pieces aside because I'm not going to be using them right away because I have this uh, tedious process of cutting apart all of these pieces of floral and uh, I just created several piles as you can see here and literally just started going at it between my glue gun and the actual grapevine wreath itself. It's pretty easy to decorate these. Um, the stems fit really nicely most of the time throughout that grapevine wreath and uh, I'm kind of going a little quick here because I am not an expert at wreaths by any means. I just kind of go with what I think looks good and I'm pretty happy with the way that this one is shaping up. Again, I'm just kind of filling in holes and creating this um, whole kind of wreath experience. For the legs and the head, I just simply wrapped a piece of twine around the grapevine and then just glued both pieces down to the bottom and the top. And when it was all done, this is what my little guy looked like hanging on the door. I thought it was super, super cute. I really love the way this looks. I think it's super festive and I think it's a great way to ring in the upcoming fall season. And for this next project, I'm gonna be using one of these fall harvest trucks. I love these wood cutouts that they have this year from Dollar Tree. These are super, super cute. And then I also grabbed some of these wood pieces from Dollar Tree as well. First thing I'm going to do is actually remove the pumpkins from the truck. I know everyone is freaking out, but uh, it's going to be really, really cute. I'm using my tool from sliceproducts.com. I absolutely love that tool. And then I just simply removed the pumpkins. Once I had those pumpkins removed, I also removed this backing on the truck. Um, I, I don't know what this is technically called, so I'm just gonna call it the fence that holds everything in the back of the truck. And as you can see, it removed pretty easily. I took some antiquing wax and just covered that completely like so. And then through the magic of television, my truck is now red because I'm a bonehead and I forgot to film this part. So I am going to paint the wheels and the hubcaps of my truck. So I'm gonna paint the wheels black. 
And then I'm gonna go through with some kind of silvery gray chalk paint and just paint those center hubcaps. I think all of us are really good at painting. Some of you are much better at painting than I am. So I'm not gonna show you this whole entire process. You'll just again see it being done here shortly. So for the back of the truck, I am gonna go ahead and just glue this on the, um, on the back of the truck. And uh, I'm gonna do it a little bit higher than normal. And look at that, all of a sudden those hubcaps are painted. And uh, this little piece here, this little cutout for the truck, I'm actually going to cover that up with a piece of painted cardboard. Now, the back of the pickup truck, I am going to glue um, some of these wood blocks on the back of my form here because I need something to help hold those wood pieces in the back of the truck. So hopefully that makes sense. And so this is what it looks like now. And as you can see, I'm literally just going to start adding some hot glue onto those wood pieces and gluing them in the back of the truck. And uh, when you have that little elevated piece, remember I did not stick it directly down on top of the red paint, you can kind of see now what's in the back of the truck, which I think is super, super cute. You can see how I've glued a couple long wood pieces right there along the base, and then I'm simply just going to take my other pieces and glue them together until you get something like this super cute right i love it already but i wanted to also create a sign for firewood that uh, this little truck is delivering to all of the crafters around the world and uh, i am just going to take some of these great dollar tree letters and an oversized popsicle stick and i'm just spelling out the word firewood whoa don't know what just happened with that crazy camera jump i did trim down the edges of my sign and then again i'm just going to take some antiquing wax go right over top of those letters kind of like so and then we're going to dry that off and when we do dry it off i did use my heat gun for that um, i dabbed away also some of the excess because you know i love to over glue and i love some over excess but uh, as you can see i'm just kind of wiping it away and then once it's dry you will go through and actually peel those letters off of there and when you do it kind of creates this really cool effect that i am just digging so much i glued it to the side of my truck and again super obsessed with it and this is what it looks like on my bar absolutely love this think it is super super adorable and uh very happy with it and for my last project i'm going to be using two of these dollar tree slingshots you can find these in the summer section at your local dollar tree it's probably the section that is slowly turning into fall i also grabbed one of these scrap pieces of wood that i had left over from a previous project if you don't have a piece of scrap wood and you can find one of these signs from dollar tree that will work also and then i did take a jenga block or a wood piece and just break it in half then i took my slingshots out of the packaging and i'm going to remove the elastic strap the ball and the little cradle thing that comes with the ball. You're not gonna need those. And then I just took one of my saws and literally just cut this directly in half, kind of right where that stem meets that curved part. Um, if you have a blade that is super sharp, that is ideal. You'll have two pieces that look like this. I think that this is already shaping up to be something fun. I took my mouse sander from Ryobi and just uh, sanded down my board just so it wasn't so rough and it would actually take paint a lot better. Then uh, I did stain my board with the antiquing wax from Waverly. I love the antiquing wax and for this one it was actually the very last drop literally of antiquing wax that I had. So then I took my Jenga wood pieces. Oh and uh, by the way I did paint my uh, stands blue there but uh, i did take my jingle wood piece pieces and glued them down at the end of each board and then i added a very generous amount of hot glue and glued those legs down to either side of the board kind of like you see me doing here these were pretty easy and they held really well and this is what it looks like when it's all done it is the cutest little candle riser or decor riser or a candle decor riser. You could certainly just put succulents and twigs and rocks on it or even some candles.